flying over planet Earth. An alien probe might detect fields of remarkable new structures cropping up. Forests of tall, slender, mechanical beings with aerodynamic arms in whirling motion. One of humanity's oldest power sources now emerges as one of its cleanest. People have been winning energy from the wind for more than 5,000 years. Taking their boat's sails ashore, residents of what is now southern Iraq began bending the wind's force to pump water nearly 3,000 years ago. Then, around 2,000 years ago, on the windy southern plateaus of Iran, farmers built walls that concentrated the airflow against bundles of reeds to spin a grindstone. Looking down on such a grain mill from above, you'd notice that a hook-shaped wall ingeniously shields the veins from the wind during their unpowered return. But it also means that only half of the veins on the rotor are actually doing any work. Windmills didn't reach northern Europe until around 1000 AD. But almost as soon as they did, the rotors began to climb higher, into clearer air, on towers. So the main shaft shifted from standing up to lying down, which, if you're a windmill, is more efficient. This idea, and the gears that made it work, most likely came from water wheels. By about 1400 AD, inventors in the Netherlands and France created a standard four-level design. With the wind rig at the top, a dwelling at the bottom, and grain working sections in between. The tower tops could be spun to catch the airstream. Soon, simple flat wind paddles became furling sails, whose graceful curvature generated aerodynamic lift. This idea really caught on in the fair, dry weather along the Mediterranean. Towers grew taller, and rotors got bigger. In 1888, Cleveland, Ohio's Charles Francis Brush coupled a 56-foot-wide rotor to an electrical generator. A big, hinged vane kept this beast on the wind. Brush stepped up the power with an innovative gearbox, and the modern wind turbine was born. His basic design plan remains the same today. A rotor of curved blades catches the wind, converting it to spinning energy in a shaft. A gearbox multiplies the spin's speed, driving a generator whose electric output is conditioned by a transformer or rectifier. Instead of a vane to steer the rotor blades across the wind, a tiny amount of the generated electricity runs a motor called the yaw control. And the whole mechanism can put on the brakes if the wind gets too gusty. A few years earlier, Charles Brush had come up with the idea for central generating stations in big cities to drive networks of his newly improved carbon arc lights. Brush's company battled with Thomas Edison's for big city contracts. Today, we'd call them competing power utilities. In this race to maximize profits, wind power lost out to cheaper coal and hydropower, and the pattern for the power industry was set. Small-scale wind systems continued to help out on family farms for some time, pumping water and making electricity. But even out on the Great Plains of the United States, the wind doesn't blow all the time. With more home appliances and machines to run, but without a good method of storing wind power, most of these families signed up for the rural electrification programs that were the economic stimulus packages of the day. And most windmills stopped turning. But today, wind power has come sailing back in a potentially world-changing way. Just about
Not all large, utility-sized arrays use horizontal-axis wind turbines. HOTS for short. But the future may soon feel a breath from the past, as fresh wind power ideas are more and more tending to revolve around the vertical axis. Vertical axis wind turbines don't need to hunt around to find the wind. They also keep their generators, power couplings, and gearboxes near the ground, within easy reach. Many vertical designs of years gone by had problems with large bending forces stressing the blades. But newer designs are sculpted to relieve these so-called torque-loading issues. And you could say that as they've become more functional, they've become more beautiful. Some are truly works of art. And as more small wind systems sprout up to serve remote sites, or single buildings, or individual farms and homes, particularly in developing nations, we could hear an echo of 4,000 years past, when farmers first began drawing power from the dancing air. <laughs>